There we go. Okay, Brian. All right, great. Well, thanks for having me. Hopefully this will be interesting. It's supposed to be interactive. Um, so I, I'm going to, you know, spots, lumps, and bumps, common and worrisome pediatric rashes. We'll go through some terminology um, to just how to, you know, better describe and be on the same page about um, um, what rashes look like um, from triage and from nursing and providers. And, um, and then just go through some common pediatric rashes and then some ones that we really should worry about if we ever see them, which we do. So the function of the skin, I mean, just a quick review, it's the largest organ in the body, so to speak. It's got three distinct functions. It protects us um, from mechanical impacts and pressure, from variations in temperature, <laughs> from microorganisms, radiation and chemicals, breakdowns in the skin, such as burns and things like that, predispose us to loss of fluid, temperature irregularity, and microorganism infection. It helps regulate us, um, temperature via sweat and hair, pyloerection, and then changes in peripheral circulation and fluid balance via sweating. Uh, vitamin D synthesis in terms of regulating our bone and calcium and phosphate, uh, phosphorus um, balance is important as well. And then the third function of the skin is sensation. So it helps protect us by letting us know if something's too hot, too cold. <laughs> well, that's the idea at least. So the anatomy, so there are layers of the skin kind of going from the most superficial to the deepest. The epidermis is the topmost layer. It's got like five layers to it. They're not really important to remember, um, I think, for our purposes at all. Really, anybody except for dermatologists. Um, the epidermis is really the barrier for the body. Um, it's made up of layers of keratinocytes, um, basically just skin cells that make a very strong protein called keratin. As I said, there's five layers. Also in the epidermis is Langerhan cells, which is kind of our first line of defense for our immune system from a skin infiltration standpoint sensory cells, blood vessels, melanocytes, which gives the skin pigment or not in the... Uh, the dermis is connective tissue layer that supports and nour nourishes the dermis and epidermis. Um, there's two distinct layers to it. And then underneath is kind of um, um, both um, flexible and also very strong tissue made up of elastin, collagen, something called ground substance. I don't think it's me either. Yeah, mine's over there. Um, fibroblasts, which allow for healing. Um, the bulk of the nervous system and also the blood vessels, lymphatics, and immune system are also in the dermis. And then there's a the subcutaneous tissue, and then the um, little um, figure to the right just illustrates these three different layers. So an introduction, a lesion is just any, basically any abnormality that's found on the skin. A rash is considered a diffuse skin abnormality, so more than just one spot. And then dermatosis is just a general term for skin disorder. It's like saying pathology or encephalopathy. It's more of like a term of generalization. So um, basically this is to illustrate just the different types of um, morphology that we describe when we're describing rashes and lesions. So kind of starting with flat. If we have flat blanching, meaning if you push it with your thumb or you put a slide on it as classically as taught in dermatology, the blood or the color moves from the uh, thing that's on the skin. Hmm. Does that make sense? Um, that's an important distinction for something. Macule. That's a macule. So a flat um, spot on the skin that's small, the size isn't really important. Like little things are macules, bigger ones are patches. Oh. Right? Uh, Telangiectasias are tiny flat blood vessels that we all have in certain places on our body. Non blanching red skin lesions are very concerning for blood actually in the skin outside of a blood vessel. So what this is is petechiae, right? Itty bitty little spots on the skin that are non blanching by definition are concerning for a coagulopathy or a thrombocytopenia or something like that. Larger lesions are purpura. So just like macules, I think it's you know kind of small as a macule, large as a patch, small as petechiae, larger as purpura. I think the sizes are a little less important when we're describing them. Um, macules can also be kind of skin colored; they can just be hyperpigmented. Not all of them are red. I just want so, to draw the distinction between. So just to, uh, to clarify, so non-blanching, that means there's blood, but right. the macules are not uh, like a blood that's leaked out. So a macule can be different colors. Um, so what I was really trying to describe is kind of a red spot on the skin. Mm -hmm. So if you have a kid who comes into triage with red spots all over his skin, right? If you push on one of them and the color disappears from that spot, that's just that's a right. macule. Just a macule. Right? So it's just a red flat spot. Okay. Versus a petechiae, okay. which suggests that the blood has gone from the blood vessel into, into the skin. The skin. Okay. So you get that with vasculitis. You get that with, you know, inf um, infl inflammatory conditions, meningitis. Mm -hmm causes a thrombocytopenia, causes a coagulopathy. So it's a much more concerning red spot. Blanching red spots, I'm like, eh, non-blanching red spots are concerning. Just kind of the bottom line I wanted to illustrate. Okay. So then there's raised. Um, so then there's fluid and non-fluid filled. So raised, small, non-fluid filled objects are called papules. Um, uh, something that's larger than a papule, again without fluid, is a nodule. A plaque is a nodule that has a flat top. 
Um, Fluid-filled raised bumps are called vesicles if they're litter, little. We, you know, uh, lay people refer to them as blisters. And then bulla if they're larger. A pustule is a small, meaning like kind of the same size as a papule, um, um, fluid-filled bump that's filled with pus, which is by definition like cloudy fluid that's filled with um, neutrophils by definition. And then an abscess is basically a big pustule. How about yeah. hives? Would that be in the plaques? Yeah, so hives would be plaques, okay. right? Because hives aren't really, they're not like a nodule because they're not rounded on top, mm -hmm. but they're raised, so they're not macular and they're not patches. They're raised just off the skin and they're totally flat. So yeah, a hive would be a perfect definition of a, a plaque. And they blanch, and they so blanch. you would not have to worry about an underlying potential. So you can have palpable purpura, meaning like um, a raised purpuric lesion. Yes. That like really HS? describes right. Yes. Right. So mm -hmm. that really describes something like HSP or meningococcini or something. Um, and yes, that would be non-blanching. Mm -hmm. Little, basically, little red bumpy things on the skin are less concerning than flat non-blanching mm -hmm. things on the skin. Right. So important types of papules. There's kind of dome-shaped ones. There's flat top ones. Um, there's oval around, there's umbilicated ones. Does anybody know, can think of an example of an umbilicated papule? Central depression. Exactly, so it's like a little papule, like a little bump that has kind of like a little belly button in it, essentially. Like a little central depression, like an insect, insect bite, bite yeah. things like that. Yeah, so that would be umbilicated. The other one's kind of not as important for pediatrics. Umbilicated is definitely something we see. Varicus, right? Mm -hmm. So kids that get, you know, little warts on their skins. They're described as varicus as like kind of heaped up papules little growths specifically. There's kind of secondary lesions that develop um, after you get kind of these primary things. Scale is kind of a white or skin colored accumulation of just the top layer of the epidermis. It's called the stratum corneum, and it's an acellular layer. Basically scale is just kind of dead skin on top of a papule or a patch. Like canification, you see this in kids who have really bad eczema, right? They get exaggerated skin lines. They get this real heaped up kind of thick skin. Um, sometimes fissuring of their skin as well. Excoriation just means like a linear disruption of the um, epidermis itself. A lot of times, you know, kids with eczema, kids with bugs bites, you'll see them. Crusting is kind of dried material from inside the body on a lesion. A fissure is a kind of deeper disruption of the epidermis that goes down to the dermis and it hurts. And erosion is like um, a scraped up area of just the epidermis, but the dermis is still there. An ulcer is a deeper erosion, essentially. It's like loss of both the epidermis and the dermis, and it tends to scar. And then atrophy, you see this in kids who use topical steroids too much for mm -hmm. eczema. They get kind of that thin skin mm -hmm. that's easily friable. Um, so here's kind of secondary lesions. Hyper when they have that, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, of course. Somebody has used those steroidal creams to mm -hmm. that point. They stop, it just pops back up It correctly. does, yeah, it does. You get, like, the problem with it is that it decreases normal, like, keratinocyte differentiation in the epidermis. So you don't have those five layers that you're supposed to. So you get kind of thin skin, essentially. Mm -hmm. and so when you stop the steroids for long enough, it'll it just pop back. back up. Yeah, it comes back up. Yeah. Um, hyperpigmentation just means darker than surrounding skin, whatever that skin color is. Hypopigmentation, paler than surrounding skin. Jaundice is specifically bilirubin that's landed in the skin. We see this in our neonates, yellow discoloration of the skin and eyes. Erythema means red skin due to increased blood flow. Erythema in general blanches with pressure, meaning that the blood is still within the blood vessels, not in the skin. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Erythema, is that like first degree burns? Erythema just means red. I have some on my chest. Yeah, it just means red. Um, so um, plaques, for instance, are, um, so hives, for instance, are erythematous, mm -hmm. right, because they're usually red. And you push on them and the blood tends to move, right, it, it displaces because it's still in the blood vessels, right? Bug bites are erythematous. Cellulitis is erythematous. All those things would be erythematous. It's just a fancy word for red. Mm. And it just it denotes increased blood supply. But it's blanching. These are derma. You see this in kids with like the staph scalded skin. Mm -hmm. They're red just from you know top of their head all the way down to their feet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's diffuse full body er erythema. That's what we throw derma. Like a scalding skin syndrome. Would yeah. you utilize that term for that? Yeah, exactly. So those kids, de by definition, have a through derma. Yeah. Which is diffuse red blanching skin. It looks like a big sunburn. Mm -hmm. A sunburn would be an example of erythema. Terminology. So. Um, this is almost done, I promise, because dermatology can just be maddening in terms of all the stuff that uh, you've used to describe. Acne.
natural means not affecting the trunk. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you had red bumps just on your face and your arms and your legs, that would be an acral distribution. Truncal means just your trunk. Doesn't affect your limbs. <clears throat> Dermatome means it goes along where sensory nerves run. Have right? people seen those kind of dermatome maps of the human body? Have you seen those before? Mm -hmm. So like, for instance, zoster, right? So that classically <coughs> runs along dermatomes, right? So that's, that's a very, um, they call it kind of pathognomic, meaning mm -hmm. that like if it runs in a dermatome, it can only be like a few number of things or one thing. Mm -hmm. So it's an important descriptor. Extensor, this is kind of weird. Um, anatomically, um, uh, we're supposed to be considered like right. this, mm -hmm. right? So this is actually our extensor side of our body, is the front of our legs, but it's the backs of our arms. So imagine somebody lying on an autopsy table is how I try to remember it, which is a little macabre, come to think of it, but that's how I learned it in anatomy. So this is the flexor surface of the arm. The flexor surface of the leg is the backs of the leg, so the backs of the knees, the calves, the extensor surfaces here, backs of the hands, backs of the, or fronts of your legs. That so it's reserved for that one, okay, for the flexor. Right. It's even more confusing with genitalia, but it, we don't have to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe too much. I mean, it's very specific. TMI. <laughs> yeah, TMI. <laughs> um, follicular means a lesion that arises from a hair follicle, just by definition. Generalized just means that it's all over. Herpetiform specifically means like a group of umbil umbilicated vesicles, as found with a herpes or herpes zoster infection or something called eczema herpeticum, which is a herpes infection of an eczema lesion. Mm. Morbilliform is a word that usually describes drug rashes and measles. So it's macular lesions that are red and usually two to 10 millimeters in diameter. Some places they're very sparse. Some places they're really packed in and concentrated. It, the people describe this like a swirling pattern. That's how I remember morbilliform is a swirling. Like a snowstorm where there's lots of snow in one part and there's less in other parts. Kebnerize is some, you know, dead guy who named it after himself. <laughs> Kebner <laughs> refers to the tendency of skin conditions to affect areas subjected to injury. So for instance, our infants and toddlers that get eczema, they get eczema, right, on, the, on their elbows, on their knees, places that are constantly getting injured. Mm -hmm. People with psoriasis also have Kebner phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Photosensitive, so people with lupus. Um, it tends to favor sun exposed areas, so they get that kind of classic rash on their faces with lupus. Seborrheic means that it happens in oily areas. Seborrhea means oil. Um, so scalp, behind the ears, eyebrows, the nasolabial folds inside the sternum, between your scapula, scapulas on your back. Symmetric means um, kind of in the same region. So a symmetric rash would be like, it's as much on my left arm as my right, versus on a unilateral would be like, it's all on my right side or just all on my left side. So you may be feeling like this after you see all the dermatology mm -hmm. Too many dermatology mm -hmm. So I think it's most useful just to describe if anybody, if this is the interactive part we're coming into. So can anybody just describe what they see on this picture here? It looks, it looks like a bug bite that's infected. It looks like an infected bug bite, but what about using some of the terms that we were Bolus using? Bolus erythematous. So erythematous. Because it's vesicular, red. I mean, that's where I get it's into not, it. It's not vesicular because it's pustule. Right, it looks more like a pustule, pustule I would agree, right? I see you're saying more like So it's an erythematous, uh, so it's a pustule surrounded by an area of erythema. Right. right. Right? And I would say that it's um, kind of poorly demarcated, too. So like mm -hmm. a, a hive, you could like draw a line around yes, a hive, right. right? This is a little bit more, well, it kind of fades into the skin in different parts. Um, so it's a pustule as opposed to a vesicle, but yeah, infected bug bite. That's what, How about this? Uh, purpuric? Yeah, so purpuric. Purper. So we're imagining that that blood's in the skin, we'd have to push on it to be yeah. sure. It also looks like it's raised. Yeah, so this so is classic palpable purpura. Yeah. I think that's probably the most to say about this one, palpable purpura. Non-blanching? Yeah, presumably these would be non-blanching, yeah. which would make, them, which would make them purpura. Okay. You got it. What is that? What is it? Do you know what he has? Yeah, so this is meningococcemia. Yeah, that's what I was going to oh, say. Okay. Yeah, this is no bueno. Yeah. This is no bueno. <laughs> 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 Nicely said, Brian. Nicely Bad. said. Bad. How, how about this one? Uh, well, that looks vesicular. vesicular. That yeah, vesicular. so it looks more vesicular, right? Mm -hmm. More like Maybe. Can, but Maybe. Maybe. This, this one is more pustular because it's a little cloudy, but these look pretty clear, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So erythematous vesicles, erythematous based vesicles, I think would be a way to say it. And we're saying a vesicle as opposed to a bulla because it's not so big. Exactly. Is this hand foot? Um, so this is actually a picture of chicken pox. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Before, Interesting. Obviously Interesting. before they broke yeah. open and then right. yeah. early and on. Dried and they're very yep. small too. Look, this one. Wow. Um, excoriated. excoriated. So excoriated. Erythematous. So it's erythematous and excoriated, right? Maybe even like kenified. Right, because you can kind of see some increased skin lines here. Mm. What word did you use? Like yeah. Lichenify. It's like oh yes, like like skin out there. Yes. Yes. Okay. There's some. Um, it looks like there's some fissuring yes. right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, how about just the general shape of it? Is it raised or flat? It's flat. flat. It's, it's mostly flat, flat, right? So you could say that this is a well demarcated erythematous patch. That's scaly with fissuring and some like identification. Where's the fissuring? That was so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. where, where do you see the fissuring? I see so it. The fissuring. See kind of lateral red, 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 red lines. It looks like it's a little bit open and annoyed there. Oh, crack oh. is another way to say it. So mm -hmm. fissuring and cracks are kind of the same thing. Oh, okay. Anybody's hands get super dry in the winter yes. like mine? You get fissuring okay. Okay. way down deep into your skin that's lines. That makes that's sense. the official word for cracked. Okay. So this is eczema. <laughs> Thank you, Norma. Yeah, this is eczema, right? This is like a classic. Excellent. How about this baby? Oh boy. Look at this. Let me look at my little lips. Demarcated. Lift. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's sloppy. I know. Yeah, I'd say it's Confluent. a little bit more sloppy. Confluent. Do you use confluent? So you could say it's generalized, generalized, right? Because it seems to be involving a lot of his skin. Yeah. You can't see his back or his legs, but... Yeah. So tell me about splotches again, because splotches, I always think that they don't connect. But splotchiness can connect. Um, um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what, um, splotchiness means okay. like in a dermatology point okay. of view. I think that splotchiness to me means kind of like areas that are more red than others. That's okay. kind of what it means to me. Got it. But it might mean okay. something different mm -hmm. to everybody else. Hmm. Um, so I mean, I think you could say that, um, in general, there's very dry skin, mm -hmm. right? The baby looks dry. Mm -hmm. There's a fancy word for it, zeroderma. Which is a silly word. There's actually an ICD-10 diagnosis you can bill for that. Get out! Every dermatologist bills for zero derma. So there's um, zero derma. There's um, erythema. It looks like some scaly. Are they doing okay out there? It looks like some maybe patches and also um, plaques because maybe it's raised in some places and maybe it's a little bit more flat in other places with scaling. That's kind of what I would describe. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the scaling? So you can just kind of, you can kind of, uh, one way to see scaling face. is you kind of look at kind of the, uh, how do you put it, kind of parallel to the skin. Mm -hmm. So like here's the side of the face, uh, you can see that there's just like raised. a little bit of mm -hmm. like raised kind of whitish scaly mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And I bet if you got down to his belly you could see yeah. the same thing well. too. Yeah. Um, rashes are meant to be mm -hmm. felt. You mm -hmm. should really run your hand along mm -hmm. rashes too. I know it sounds kind With of With my glove on. Yeah, so until you're certain that it's not infectious, I think exactly. that's your glove on, right? So like, don't run your hand along the scabies. No, Linda. <laughs> don't run right your hand on. along the scabies. <laughs> yeah. Your takeaway point, Linda. <laughs> yeah, don't touch scabies. <laughs> Although, see, that's the problem. What? Then they, you, they look similar sometimes these days. Yeah, they certainly can. And so I mean, what are we saying this for dermatologists? So I would say this is also eczema. I would mm -hmm. say this is a child with worse eczema than yeah. the last one. Wow. wow. God, we had a horrible one the other night. See, and that looks kind of a more atypical to me, I guess, than it does. Or maybe I just haven't seen it's it that. Because this is really the face, the <laughs> underarm. You have it in, which I guess makes it more. Extensive. You even have it in, like, the crack marks, which, which, is, which is very, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I think this baby's that bad. I mean, this baby's got some bad eczema going on. You know? Sometimes you get these kids that just have a full body. So what are the typical places for eczema again? So in infants and toddlers, well, let's talk about that, because it might be one of the common feeding interventions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It might be. It might be. Oh. Uh, um, so, um, we already don't want to make it too much of a shot. So, atopic dermatitis. So, when people say eczema, they really mean atopic yes. dermatitis mm -hmm. versus other causes of dermatitis. Atopic means caused by allergy. Atopic dermatitis is eczema. Um, like, don't you feel like they just use that term when they don't know? Yes, they do. Yeah, they use dermatitis. <laughs> which means like red. Right, atopic dermatitis. Right, which is some reason. Atopic dermatitis is eczema. 
Well, so it's, it affects one out of every five children in the U.S. Wow, are you kidding? No, it's a ton. Mm. Um, it classically presents in infancy, but it can persist into adulthood. Um, it's relapsing, remitting, it's chronic, it's itchy skin disease. So it's marked by dry, scaly skin, erythematous papules, and also plaques. Right? Mm. So those are the, the trade mode, trademarks. It's a distribution. Infants and young kids extend their surfaces, yeah. right? So again, yeah. anatomic, it's going to be on the fronts of their legs. It's going to be on their elbows. It's going to be in those places, right? Older people, scalp on their face, on their body. Older people, it tends to be in flexural regions. So yeah, because I notice it in the folds. Mm -hmm. They start to get when they get older. They start to get them in the folds of their arms, backs of their knees mm -hmm. is another classic spot. It tends to spare the diaper region because it's uh, more uh, moist down in the diaper region, mm. and eczema is a disease of moisture. So how we treat it is um, gentle skin care. Gentle skin care is kind of a combination of um, making sure that there is good, thick emollients, which is a fancy word for like thick moisturizer, Aquaphor, Vaseline, on the kid's body twice a day. Not taking too many baths. Taking a bath is very That's drying. huge to patients too, and yeah. I feel like I say it all the time, and they I really... Know. Yeah, it takes many times for people to kind yeah. of get the, that they really need to use something thick. Lotions are no good. It's like thick, creamy stuff like Vaseline. That's what you want. That's what kind of consistency you want. Um, gentle skin care also means not using in perfumes, not using soaps yeah. that have a lot of like smell and, and dyes and things like that that are irritating the skin. Not using real hot water in the shower, only bathing a couple of times a week. And then when you get flares, using topical steroids. Everything as weak as hydrocortisone to as strong as, you know, baclomethazone and other ones. Just recently I had somebody who had eczema and they had used their steroids so much that they actually ended up with a fungal infection. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. And that I was really like, happens. wow. Yeah, I mean, is that just it. because it's so chronic, the use of their steroid? Yeah. I think some parents are kind of mistaking um, the steroids really are just like, um, the steroids are very similar to the asthma steroids, right? Mm -hmm. Like those things that, well, actually that's not really enough. Because asthma, we do do preventative. Right, right, that's true. I guess it's kind of more similar to like the PO steroids that you would give to an asthmatic. Like they're yes. there when you flare up, you yes. know? Yes. But the baseline care to prevent it is all this gentle skin care. Yeah. That we're all what did your patient do? Plus the kids with these extensive uh, eczema.